Hey, I'm PK Subban, and I'm filling in for the beautiful Lori Graham. But she's in the house. She's close by. Lori, where are you? Coaching from the sidelines. Okay, side that's line. great. Okay, Enough yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> as you can see... We interrupt this program to bring you a news blast. Following extensive reflection, I have the unfortunate task of announcing important changes in our organization. Effective immediately, Pierre Gauthier has been relieved of his duties as the team's general manager. After discussing this, discussing this decision with Bob Gainey, Bob and I agreed that he would no longer be acting as, advisor, as an advisor to the club given Pierre's departure. This is a Bikini Bottom News special report. Joe Bros, there is breaking news. So breaking, in fact, that's not even a headline on the NHL home. Can you believe it? Pierre Gauthier is fired. It's only been since February 8th, the season starting. So he barely even gotten any time at all to manage the team. But they're hiring me instead. I don't know what's going on. Why they're Pierre Boivin, the president's making all these manage management tra uh, transactions or changes, should I say. But you know what? There's no time to waste. I'm going to start off by making, by setting my blueprint. My f my fingerprint is going to be all over this franchise by this first decision, hiring. Firstly, I guess I should say I'll be clearing house and I'll be hiring Jean Beliveau's wife, Elise Couture, as the assistant general manager. You want to talk about making a good PR statement? Progressive. That's right. Now that being said, I won't be listening to her. The next biggest change I'll be making is hiring the man, the myth, the legend himself, Pierre Maguire. Now, probably the biggest issue or um, problem that a lot of um, that arises most when managing the Canadians is you gotta be multi. You gotta be able to speak French, right? You gotta communicate to the to the fans, right? Now, don't worry. I asked Pierre Maguire before I hired him, "Can you speak French?" And he says, "Un poco, amigo." And that was reassuring. So I got the whole, I got the foundation set up. Assistant general manager, I got my coach set up. And of course, I'll be the mastermind behind this, behind, behind reorganizing this whole franchise. Now, something important to, to consider is that we just got off a, a really impressive season where we just kind of defied expectations in the playoffs. We went on a, a playoff run going all the way to the third round. Lots of people like to praise Halak and um, you know saying that he carried the whole team I like to think though that it was just like Halak definitely had his had an ama amazing performances but ultimately I think that as a team we performed super well together so that's kind of the idea I'm, I want to carry forth with this with this team let's go ahead and look at our team card for more additional information all of this is won't be useful Stanley Cubs we are leading the league in Stanley Cup in throughout NHL history, right? So there's a standard, right, that the Montreal Canadiens have to live up to. That being said, though, the last time we won the Stanley Cup was in 1993, and the Canadians, the Canadian fans are not used to being, having to wait 17 years for a Stanley Cup, uh, Stanley Cup final appearance, at least, right? So there's a bit of pressure for me to perform in that way. Uh, here, we'll see that our, that Pierre Maguire behind the bench, he's emphasizing our team needs being on skill and speed. I'll take that into consideration when forming this team. Six feet is our average height. So, yeah, I guess that's a common criticism also of the Canadians uh, as of late in this time period, right? That we're pretty small. We don't have a name. We don't have a captain named yet. That's all right. Well, we might sort that out later. You'll see. Uh, alternate captains, though. This is who was left behind in the previous regime. So you know what, that's the kind of idea we're going with. It's important to consider. Now, of course, let's just have a little roster breakdown here. Let's get a, an idea of what we're working with. I think that's pretty important, right? So let's, um, yeah, you know what, let's start off with goalies. Probably the most controversial and uh, the biggest problem that I'll have to deal with right now is this little goaltending tandem that we have here set up. It's, uh, it's definitely something... A bit tricky to deal with now. Unfortunately, in this game, how it dealt with it is that uh, it, even though this game is, uh, even though this game starts at the beginning of the 2010-2011 season, when in uh, our timeline at least, Halak has already been traded, and uh, Price has, has been given a contract extension. I guess 
this game decided to just um uh like i don't know i guess uh because they needed the rosters open and this game came out in august i think um and that trade happened in june right so maybe the rosters were already set in place um so i don't want to cheat my way out of uh, doing this though i will be making a trade in this video dealing with one of these with this problem right here but um you know it's it's a good i guess it's a really good problem to deal with though right i mean here we have halak who let's see it shows um i'm pretty sure it shows the the draft oh no it doesn't oh well he was in the 2003 draft in the ninth round i believe <clears throat> And here we have our, our more higher upside pick right here, Carey Price. And in our timeline, he's the guy who we, who the Canadians or um, Pierre Gauthier decided to run with, right? He traded Halak away. And, um, you know, I guess you could say that Halak, he's been with the organization for, as you can see, for a longer, for a longer time. Um, Carey Price, I guess it's not so much of a big difference, but, but probably the most notable thing about Carey Price is the immense pressure he was under in in the last couple of years really right i mean there were so many instances where the the he was set under such unrealistic expectations being an expat or or uh, performing to such high standards there were a couple instances where you know the the fans began to boo at him and just shoot it in on price and that's what happens the fans get going on carry price with that little weak one into him you know it's a he, he definitely has a strange relationship with the canadians fans something to consider i guess halak on the other hand he just came off of a an incredible run i don't think yeah this game doesn't show playoff performances but you know he he definitely like i mentioned in the beginning like i think it was more of a team uh, a team an amazing amazing team performance but he definitely was responsible for a lot of it right and he, he also had a really good season altogether, right? Nine, nine to four save percentage. Uh, they split the starts though. So yeah, I guess we'll, we, we definitely, I don't want to cheese it out and have uh, be able to run with both. So yeah, I'll just pretend that they're, uh, yeah, yeah I, I'll deal with it. Don't worry, don't worry. Next up is our defenseman. Whoops, accidentally skipped over to the next team. Our defenseman to deal with. Um, Markov, this is another player that's been on the team for quite a while now. Um, as you can see, he has, he, he was a bit injury prone last year. And, um, I think either way though, he got a contract extension or was that previous years? I don't know. I remember at one point he was pretty injury prone. Um, he, he definitely does like it. What I never really remembered, I guess, is how amazing his offensive outputs were. Like he produced a lot of points something really cool to consider um as we can see as we can see here he he fits into the mold of the team right and that's really important for one of our better defensemen our best defenseman that is he's a fast skater he's a good skater and he's a good passer right and he's just an all-around good defenseman in the top right it says he's an offensive defenseman but he has 87 offensive awareness and 85 defensive awareness so i feel like we can really split up his time a lot we can we can play him maybe like 24 minutes a night. We can get away with doing that. Here, though, we have a, I guess, our, a bunch of uh, mediocre defensemen, to say the least. We have Spacek, Spacek here, Hamilik, former first overall pick, I think, if I remember correctly. Tampa Bay, yeah. I think he was the first overall pick. Um, that contract's kind of loaded, and Spacek is too. And he's a nerd offensive type, right? Uh, Hamlick is also offensive. Bergeron is also offensive. I mean, so many of these offensive defensemen. It's crazy, really. And also, if you've noticed, uh, where does it say? Where does it say? He shoots left. He shoots left. He shoots left. We, so many left defensemen. Hal Gill. Thankfully, we have a defensive defenseman here, and he's a uh, he's he's a pretty he's a pretty big guy, right? Um, he's he's old though, and that's what you'll see about a lot of our defensemen. They're all pretty old. Paul Mara, another offensive defenseman. Um, George is a young, more younger uh, defenseman, and uh, thankfully he's defensive too, so that's good. O'Byrne. Um, so really nothing too noteworthy. At least we do have a top-end defenseman, but in my opinion, way too many offensive defensemen. 
and that's that can be uh, sort of a problem right so moving on to our forwards and here I guess you'll notice another trend um, here we have Camilleri who ha also had an amazing uh, playoff performance in the previous year I think he scored 13 goals in 13 games or something like that pretty crazy and um, so yeah he was a recent free agent uh, acquisition in the last couple of years Tomasz Plekanics and I want to show you this this is crazy I never knew Plekanics actually produced at this output like, look at that 70 points in 82 games <coughs> oh, excuse me that's a yeah so we can rely on him for a lot I mean we could just check out his offensive awareness 88 and his defensive awareness is pretty I guess relatively low to what I had um, always thought of him as so I guess that's weird but I wouldn't mind putting him on the PK um, yeah and then here we have Brian Gianta who in our timeline was eventually named the captain I'm not too sure about that yet though well we'll have to see about how he performs um, right and then gotta take a look at these contracts though so those are pretty hefty contracts I mean a good sign though is that they do fit into the team mold they're good skaters 85 86 90 Andre Kostitsin here he's a 91 skater a really yeah he, checking in the top right he's a finesse player he's a skill player um, at least he has only one year left on that on that um, that deal but you want to talk about contracts look at this man holy moly Scott Selena Gomez seven mil at this point I think that's one of the most he I, he's definitely one of the more uh, highest paid players in at this point in time it's pretty crazy I mean for for comparison sake Crosby at this time had an uh, an 8.7 contract I think so imagine that Gomez being paid 1.4 million less than Crosby here's Sergei Kustitsin uh, Andre's brother um, I think he's younger by two years yeah well I I, I kind of the approach I want to take with these guys is I want to play them on the on the same line, right? You got to play brothers together, you know. They probably probably appreciate that more and get that locker room morale up. Um, and then here we got a bunch of our lower end players, um, Darsh and Lapierre. Lapierre might be our future captain. I remember at a certain time period there was there were rumors now uh, there were rumors that he would be the next captain. Uh, now he's stuck on TV Aspo and does like weird dances and stuff but something really important I want to point out right here is the something something that is common with a lot of these guys a lot of these guys on our team so Andre Kostitsin look at this guy right Brian Gianta look at this guy Kostitsin his brother um, where else Camilleri Gomez all right so what do you notice about all of these guys it's been something I mentioned it I think I mentioned it or I might have mentioned it before in this video what is it that's right they can't speak French that's an immense problem that's a that's a super problem I mean I don't want to give Lapierre first line duties just because of that we, we got to acquire a good French speaking player um, eventually right at some point we need to and uh, the next big um, I guess big problem that I should point out is our contract or um, our cap space situ situation and that's if you take a look at the top right we have 1.3 million that's not a lot guys that's not a lot for future contracts and in, in uh, this upcoming year I mean take a look at what's what's upcoming Markov I mean Markov's also coming off the books but you might want uh, the same money in the same realm I guess uh, mechanics he's gonna want a major payday right um, Th thankfully Hamlick is going to come off um, who else all these guys Kustitsin these skill players Pulio Pugliat however you pronounce it George's one of our only good defensive defensemen I mean we have a contract problem we, we have a money problem so that's something I'm all, I might also have to deal with uh, let's take a look at the minors though let's see what we have coming up anything noteworthy we have this guy Matt Caro Matthew Caro is this the guy who eventually would go on to play with Tampa Bay? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. He looks like he's an okay skater. Let's check his potential. Uh, where is it? Potential, potential, potential. All right, 59. Yeah, he, he doesn't really... I mean, on the bright side, something, I guess, 
in a way he is an asset to this team is he is right-handed but 59 potential he, he doesn't look something to be so hyped up about um yannick weber this guy he's another offensive defenseman he's only 22 though so that's good he's 72 and it uh, doesn't look like he produces so much yet in uh, the couple of games that he's gotten but um uh he looks like an all right skater i guess potential is 82 that's pretty good um senses he's all i guess he's all right i mean nothing special max patcheretti now i had pierre mcguire do a bit of pre-scouting and he told me patcheretti will be nothing more than a third round uh, a third liner for this team um i guess that's how we should project him to be he does have i guess relatively more size compared to the rest of our higher end players on this team so that's something we should take into consideration let's take a look at his, uh, his stats pretty mediocre skater nothing special like weber i guess potential 80 so that's good how is his um yes uh, puck skills nothing much his, his shot is pretty mediocre too that's interesting um senses he's average too i guess so nothing really too special here uh shooting tendency is also pretty low so yeah, I guess um, maybe he is only a third rounder, a third liner. I keep on saying that, man. Uh, here we have P.K. Subban. Wow. The, and the young P.K., only 21. Look at this guy. He's a really good skater, too. This guy might be the excellent, well, like the blue chip prospect that we really need on this team. Wow, look at this guy, man. Look at him. His senses suck, though. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, yeah, he is definitely potential captain material um brock trotter i've never heard of this guy 80 potential that's pretty good mediocre skater though or i guess like nothing special skater um and we have these guys nothing special yeah D david de Arnais. wow is this guy the f uh, uh only 71 potential never mind he's nothing special only 21 strength wow okay so maybe we won't see we won't be seeing him seeing him anytime soon uh, is this Jay or no Jason Pandolfo? Um, let's see if there's any other noteworthy potential guys. Uh, Maxwell, Ben Maxwell uh, doesn't produce much. He's a mediocre skater. Yeah, he just has good potential. Maybe we'll keep him. All right, that's uh, enough looking at roster. I probably spent a lot of time looking at this. Yeah, probably ten minutes. Our, um, I guess our next step. Let's take a look at any potential free agents. And you know what? I did some pre-scouting. There is an interesting option. So Zherdev, or yeah, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Zherdev, he's only 25. And let's take a look at his potential. Whoops. 91 potential. Now, he is definitely the big fish in the free agency. I'm not sure we can afford him, though. The most interesting option, right? There's Sergei Zubov here, too. I mean, he is the right-handed defenseman, but and he's complete. So that uh, yeah, that would be interesting, I guess. Very interesting. Uh, the most interesting option, though, is Sergei Fedorov to me. We didn't really have a lot of lower-end depth for us. Sergei Fedorov, um, I guess he has some ties. Maybe he has some ties to uh, Tretiak and how he played in uh, against the Canadians back in the 70s or whatever. I think so, at least. He's a pretty good skater, as you can see. He fits into our team mold. And look at those face-offs, 90. He's an amazing defensive player. I mean, I think... Um, what was what's his name ken hitchcock or ah no what was that other scott bowman yeah he even credited him saying that maybe fedorov might even be able to play um he might be able to be a, a good defenseman too now we wouldn't play him at defense we would play him at center um something that i'm very interested in but first we gotta make some moves that's right i want to make my presence felt here as soon as possible and uh yeah, I also just want to show off how the trading mechanics work in this game. So, uh, don't worry though, I made some pre-scouting moves. I wanted to make sure I know I knew somewhat what I was going to do. And that this first this uh, first move, uh, I, I, men I, mentioned it for, I mentioned it a bit, and that's our cap problems, right? We have a lot of guys who are getting paid a lot of money for no reason. And the first move, we'll be making Roman Hamlick... We'll be trading him off. Don't worry about this uh, trade value thing. It looks full at the moment, but uh, you'll see how it adjusts over time. So this is essentially going to be some sort of cap dump, right? 
and one of the only teams that in the league right now who has a lot of room in terms of cap space are the New York Islanders. Um, so you'll see eventually, but uh, since this is just going to be a cap space, a cap dump move, um, actually it, it won't really be just a cap uh, cap dump since since uh, Roman Hamlick is pretty a uh, uh, um, what's the word um, like. He's he's an acceptable defenseman, right? He's eighty one overall. It's not like he's terrible. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be taking draft picks in return though, and it's gonna start off with uh, let's see, what did I write down here? A two thousand eleven second, right? So right now, wait, is it? Huh, interesting, interesting, and it's gonna be a two thousand twelve third round pick. Wait, hold on. I think what I wrote down is somehow wrong. Is it? Whoa, whoa, okay, 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 okay. So did you guys see that just now? That was pretty interesting. Uh, I was just looking through to see wh what I might have missed or what I might have gotten wrong. I swapped out these uh, the years of these, these two picks. Um, I don't know why the trade value was all off. I guess... Because uh, each time you start up a new franchise mode, the values and uh, team positions might change, I guess. Um, but anyways, I offered this pick, the this deal. Then they came back with a counter offer. That's something you don't see much, I don't I don't think, in um, the EA games, at least recently. And so they offer me, and they just change it. They, they make it so I have to offer a seventh round pick. I don't know how it changed the interest part that much. It's pretty weird, to be honest. Um... Now, I think this move makes sense because, I, as you can see in the top left, the Islanders do have the money for it. And if we go down to defensemen, it's not like they have... Um, they're kind of in a similar position, position <coughs> as us. Um, they don't have, like, the, the most depth, um, but they can definitely afford the uh, the player. Uh, I, I don't... I, I don't I'm not sure if I can make entirely 100% realistic trades, but I'm trying my best to make this um, at least somewhat possible, right? And I think this makes sense. They counter-offered it too, so at least in-game they want it. And this is the trade I'm going with. Roman Hamlick, you're going off to New York Islanders, and uh, this is essentially just making more cap space because we definitely need it. So let's accept this counter-offer from the Islanders. All right, so now that's a uh, that puts us in a really much more favorable position. We have cap space now, right? Um, in, in the future, it makes more sense for us. And now here comes the biggest blockbuster. Actually, first, I, I guess uh, here's a little rundown of the draft picks we have. So, um, yeah, I guess two seconds for next year is pretty good, especially for uh, unloading a $5 million contract. But here is the the biggest contract, the, the biggest blockbuster, should I say. And you know what? I don't think any move that any GM regarding this uh, this problem we have here would be accepted well by any of the fans. But I think this is the best move moving forward because I had some insight from Pierre Maguire. He leaned, in, he leaned into my ears for a bit and he whispered in my ears, it doesn't make any sense that we drafted Carey Price in, in, uh, in the first round in 2005 or whatever it was in the first place, right? We had so many more other goaltenders to work with. This is a big leap. Oh, man, this is off the bus. This is right off the reservation. You oh, had man. Carey Price, Bob. Right at the There's nothing wrong with Carey Price's athleticism. I mean, he's a great handle of the puck, and he's very technically sound, and he's a big body presence on all that in goal. But you think about it now. Jose Theodore, Cristobal Huey, they traded Matthew Gannon. They have Jan Donis, who they signed as an unrestricted free agent coming out of Brown University. This is not a fit for Montreal. They have so many other needs. They are very unproven on defense. They just bought, let go of Patrice Brisebois. They don't have a big body presence down the middle at center. Yes, they have Radic Bonk, who they got in a get on trade. That's a huge price they paid to get Bonk. I don't know about this fit at all for Montreal. They have so many other needs. Well, here and here are some of the other problems. And in this case, it's still it's still true. We have Halak, right? So on the on the trading block. This is the decision we're making for we're going forward with or trading price. This is gonna be a what could have been. And now there there were a couple um I guess uh rumored trade destinations at the time for where uh both of these goalies can actually go. Now uh I think that moving forward uh, that, that that this move might also make more sense for this team. It's the San Jose Sharks. Now the um 
let's take a look at their goaltending situation, right? They just came, came off of another pretty disappointing uh, playoff run, right? And I guess you can say that they really, like, Yevgeny Nabokov, he doesn't really have many, too many years left, and he has only one year left on his uh, on his deal, right? So it's not like they, that they're um, handcuffed in a way, right? In their goaltending area. So I think it makes sense that they have a goaltender, goaltender for the future. And in that case, we got to take a goaltender back. This is a, a Thomas Grice, right? He has 89 potential, which is pretty crazy. But in my simulations, he doesn't really get too big, uh, too good. And um, in real life at the time, I don't think there was uh, too, too, uh, too high of a projection for this guy. So he's going to be in a deal going back. And so far, the, the values in, is extremely in our favor. So, and that's why the next biggest piece coming back for us is of course a french speaker mark edward vlasic vlasic pickles himself so let's take a look at his stats he's performed pretty well in san jose 16 points 36 points um he has amazing potential so i like to consider this as a um as a blue chip prospect or a really good a young player for another good young player we're giving them a franchise goalie and they're giving us a really good defenseman you can argue uh, how much it actually makes sense um, but I think this is the most realistic trade I can make at this time. He's a an all right skater, I guess. But most importantly, he's a defensive defenseman. This is this is the kind of player that we really need on this team. He is unfortunately a left-handed defenseman, so it doesn't really fill out that part of the team. He has good defensive awareness, so that's what I'm choosing as the uh, biggest piece coming back here. Now, of course. Um, I don't really think this is so entirely fair so far. We're giving up a, they're giving us a lot of good assets back. So, um, giving them this <laughs> Paul Mara guy, uh, they're getting a left-handed defenseman back. He's offensive. And, um, I don't know. I, I think he's, he has a pretty good contract. He has pretty, I guess, relatively all right years in the past. He's performed pretty well, I guess. Um, I guess he's like a, a bottom four defenseman right and for some reason he has crazy good trade value and for that reason we will also be trying to sneak in another asset and that is this um yeah i believe it's this 2011 second round pick and as you can see it's still the interest bar is still full so that's pretty crazy um now to make it more fair though because i don't think like, um, I guess that's a problem that a lot of people face when trying to make these GM trades is that although in the game system it's fair, the interest bar is all the way full. Um, I don't think it's, I feel like I'm fleecing them right now, right? So I'll be giving them a, uh, what was it? A 2012 Islanders pick for next year. And what is it? A 2011 Montreal pick, third third round pick and of course the interest bar still hasn't changed i think this is fair though um i'm not totally ripping them off i don't think and yes yeah, so let's make this go through and there it is the biggest shocker trade i made so far trading away carry price whoa holy holy moly all the fans are going cuckoo bananas and uh whoops i did no 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 markov is not being traded yet um yeah, I said yet. I don't. I actually don't know what I'm gonna do moving forward with him. But in the present, in the foreseeable future, we're keeping him. Don't worry. Don't worry. And ah, man, so we already made like that was already in its in in it, in itself like a crazy big trade, right? We just traded our uh, our potential future franchise goaltender, right? And I mean, how he's performing right now in real life, it's pretty crazy to consider trading him. But you know what? In this timeline, I think it makes sense. Halak, we owe you something. And uh, yeah, that's where we owe you a chance to perform more and give you more games with this team. Now, I'm not done. I still have one more sneaky deal to make. And that, and that deal involves going here all the way to the Columbus Blue Jackets. All right, sorry about that. I just need to drink some water. I was thirsty. It's pretty hot in here, actually. So for this next trade, just um, for some context, I guess, and I'll put up what we're trading away too. I read a uh, Steve Dangle's, uh, this book is ruining, ruining my life book there. Um, 
his autobiography or whatever. And I read about this interesting prospect. Uh, if you know anything about this time period, maybe uh, you might remember this prospect. Um, he, he was kind of get, dealt the wrong cards. He, he had some attitude problems, um, difficulties adjusting to the North American defensive style, um, right? And w what I'm looking for in this trade is to give this guy a second chance. And that is this guy former six overall pick i believe in the 2008 or 2009 draft um as you can see here he's he's had some strange difficulties uh putting up numbers despite him being a super offensive dynamo take a look at his stats he's an amazing skater his potential is 94 right he has pretty good passing too and the senses are really good too so and his shooting tendency is 82 so that's a that's something uh, that's higher as far as i know uh for players in this game um now, the reason why I think this makes sense is because um, if you didn't know, um, I, I kind of introduced who this player, who this guy was at, uh, during this time. He, he had, he's, he's kind of like the, the typical or the stereotypical Russian player, um, right? He, he had problems playing uh, the defensive style of hockey. He had attitude problems. Um, he, at one, at one point he was even quoted by saying he won't, play in the bottom six or something he's the top six player and so he, yeah that's the kind of player he is um now the reason why i feel confident in obtaining this kind of player according to these in real life circumstances is because i'm trusting pierre mcguire with a carry price trade and i'm going to trust him in fixing this guy up too so i'm not worried at all um now you might also begin if that's your argument that uh he's not a player worth it that's my argument for uh, justifying why it's worth it. Now, my justification for why three second round picks in a yeah in these different years right is worth a top tier prospect like this, and that my reasoning is because if you didn't know, he was actually traded later on because of all these um his uh, in real life problems, his attitude towards the team. He was actually traded to the Ottawa Senators for I believe it was a third round pick and a B tier prospect. So I think this trade is just essentially just us making a better deal than the Ottawa Senators would at this time. So yeah, that's my justification. I hope it makes sense and I hope it's somewhat realistic. I'm going after a player that would either way in our timeline end up being traded anyways. And uh, hopefully he would end up being, he would end up getting, he would end up get getting fixed in our franchise. So let's go ahead and offer this trade. And there we go. Yeah, he they accepted it. So um, I guess, wait, let's take a look at our assets that we have right now. So we still have our first, but we have no seconds. We don't have our third, and we don't have any seconds next year either. On the other hand, we have a uh, our goaltender department all fixed up. We have a dedicated um, goalie that, no, I don't know who will be playing in the minors. I'll fix that up later, I guess. Halak. Uh, so yeah, goaltender is all fixed up or organized and we have a clear plan in mind. Defense, our defense is um, we turn away bad contracts and we're giving more guys more chances to play. Um, so that's that. And forward wise, we acquired a top tier prospect and a rookie player or young in player, Nikita Filatov. And uh, I hope this, um, <coughs> this, um, Eastern European influence can help him stay and feel um, uh, like comfortable in the locker room and stuff. And so, yeah, that's the direction, all the moves that I've made so far in this introductory, I guess. It, it, this video is probably going to be super long. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead, though, and set up the lines. Actually, before that, there is actually one more move that I really need to make. And that is something that I kind of alluded to before, and that is signing Mr. Sergei Fedorov. Now, maybe Sergei Zubov might be a good option as well. We'll see how much money we're left over with. However, I really want to sign this guy, Sergei Fedorov, as a more um, center depth, and he's a, he fits into our team really well. So let's go ahead and try to sign this guy. Looks like he's willing to sign just about anything. Let's try to maybe get a better deal one year one year deal for two mil it's not like 
Ah, man. It's not like we're makes a difference, right? 2.1 to 2 mil. Let's just see if we can get it for 2 mil. And it was rejected. Um, can we go two years? Two ye I don't mind paying him two years. It's not like he's going to drop off so much. Let's go two years, 1.5. And it was accepted. Welcome to the team. And it looks like we have a... A bit too ma too many forwards on the team. So let's go ahead and uh, show off another gameplay mechanic of this. We're in the Hamilton Miners, uh, Vladimir Modin, Modin. Let's go ahead and release. Oh wait, is he a? No, 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 no. Okay, never mind. It's a good thing this popped up. I need to release a forward. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of Wyman then, because yeah, he doesn't look like anything much. We need more space, so. There we go. Let's see if there's anyone else we can call up. Doesn't look like it. And yeah, that's that's the team going forward. Let's see if there's anyone else on the team. Tom Payet, we'll send you down too. Anyone else? Darsh, O'Burn, O'Bron. No, that's O'Burn, right? Yeah. All right. So that is all the moves we're going to make we still have 3.84 million to work with i guess i'll um uh, if anyone watches this by the time i'm actually actively uploading this um i guess you can you can ask you can uh, let me know should i sign this sergey zubov guy sergey zubov guy um and, uh, pretty mediocre skating it's not terrible by all means but yeah, he could definitely fit in on the team um good senses yeah I, I wouldn't see any reason not to other than maybe contract reasons uh yeah we'll, we'll think about it right now let's set up the lines not to bore you since this video is probably already super long i'll set it up and um yeah i'll get back when i have everything ready <sighs> all right so i set up everything up i got the uh, classic midget line here cam cami gomez and uh, gianta um, I wanted to, um, yeah, I wanted to reunite the Kostitsin brothers on the same line. However, I, 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 I needed mechanics uh, to um, obviously be center, right? But I, I, I can't disrupt or annoy Filatov, right? He needs to play top six minutes, so I'm putting him there. And Kostitsin's unfortunately going to be as um, separate from his, from his uh, older brother, five on five. He's going to be playing with Fedorov though, with Pulio or Pouliot, however you pronounce it. Then I really like this fourth line. Check this out. Moen, Moore, and Lapierre. They're um, pretty, like, Moen's pretty uh, mediocre skater, but Dominic Moore, check out his skating, man. Yeah, he's really good, and uh, Lapierre's a good skater, too. I think this is a really good fourth line. Next up, defensively. Ah, uh, man, I'm not too sure about this, though. Markov, obviously, is going to get top pairing, but Vlasic, I'm not sure if we should just... um. Like a push him into the wolves like this, right? I mean, he he's visit he's playing for his um his, his uh probably hometown team. Uh, his hometown team, sorry. And I I don't know how um like maybe he might get the nerves or something. Uh, we'll, we'll try it though. We'll we'll put, we'll put him there. It works out well because uh, he's defensive. Markov is offensive. I got two offensive defensemen here though: Spachek and Bergeron, and Georges and Gill. I don't know if I should split them up. Maybe I should really. Uh, I'll put put it like a gill on the right side. Then, uh, yeah, like that. Um, Halak and Grice. I'm going with Grice as the backup because uh, it looks like he had some experience here. Played all right. Go with him. And uh, power play. This is how I'm setting up the power play. I'm going with the one three one. hopefully. We'll, we'll actually, uh, we'll see how uh, Pierre Maguire, good old Pierre Maguire, sets it up. Uh, this is a um, penalty kill. Um, I'm going with a, yeah, I think we're pretty fortunate to have these good fourth line guys. It's pretty good. And uh, yeah, that's bas basically it. Um, we're not going to name a captain yet. And I think this introductory video has gone on long enough, really. Um, how about we take a look at the home? Any tra changes? We have a 3.8 million in cap space. We have an overall of 86. Anything else? 
worthy of checking out no all right you know what so i'll call it a video for now next time we're going to be opening up our our season opener checking out our season opener against the montreal uh, against the toronto K um jesus Ma maple leaves my god all right i'll see you then